You are tuning into session two of the Hidden Shrine of Tomochan, titled Into the Shrine. In our last session, the party uh, found themselves stranded on the beach of the Amedio jungle, watching their ship that brought them here sail off under the horizon. Immediately, they could feel that something was wrong in the jungle. Shadows deep and dark, unable to be penetrated by even the best sight. And as they proceeded forward, following the markers on their maps, they found the first mark, which was the giant statue. Yasni got a little bit too close for comfort, though, as he was pulled under the ground by a trapdoor spider, and battle ensued. Monty, oh wait, it wasn't Monty, it was Aaron, being smart and quick-witted, lit up the entire barrel beneath the ground with a handily crafted Molotov. Shortly thereafter, was that you? I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Monty. It was somebody. Okay, Monty. It was Monty. Hey, good thinking, buddy. So uh, shortly thereafter, Olman tribesmen showed up and led them to the village of Sunpoint, a village hidden amongst the trees and the foliage up in the uh, upper arbor of the jungle. There they met with their chief who tried desperately to convince them not to go, but to no avail. Every single one of them chose to continue forward. And as they went, they found themselves before a wall carved with eyes, each of these eyes holding an umber hulk eye, forcing them to relive their worst nightmares to live within them until they overcome their fear. Luckily for the party, they made it all the way through, but a single pack mule ran off after succumbing to its uh, fear. Um, <laughs> eventually, they arrived at the uh, city of Tomoachan. Uh, it was... Ru ruined, falling apart, forgotten. And as they entered, uh, they heard sounds all around them and people marked by the bloodless curse uh, chasing them. The ground opened up beneath them, crumbling inwards, and they fell into the darkness beneath the city. And that is where we'll pick up. You come to. Your head ringing, uh, bruised, battered light filtering in from above from some distant hole in the earth uh, catching on the specks of dust as they float around you. A quick survey of your surroundings would reveal that you were in a long narrow chamber running east to west. In the center is a large domed shape. The east wall is blank while the west wall harbors a collection of niches carved into the stone. On the far end of the chamber, in the center of the wall, a large, featureless stone door rests. The alcoves along the wall are recessed, shallow, uh, tiled, not very deeply carved, but something is sitting within them. And as you stand to your feet, Bits and pieces of rubble still falling down around you. Uh, you see that along the walls are intric intricately carved symbols of those cat things you saw before. Carved into the city walls above. You now recognize them to be um, dire panthers. These massive shadow cats that lurk within the jungle. But they appear to be fighting something else. Aaron, as you stand to your feet, you feel a deep tinge of darkness, something that was faint at first standing above here, but now as you've fallen into the heart of things, it seems to be all around you, heavily weighted upon your soul. What do you think? What are you doing? As Aaron stands up, kind of making sure that he hasn't been too badly injured in any of the fall, making sure all of his limbs and extremities work correct, that he can think as straight as is reasonable. He checks himself to make sure, finds himself to be fine, and that's when he feels that this weight bearing down on him. And I think his first instinct would be to, to reach out, to reach kind of down into his, his holy powers granted to him the, the power to detect versus 
I mean, it's gonna, I'm gonna use my divine sense. See if there's any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. Within 60 feet of you. Hollow or desecrated land or anything like that. Okay. Um, you don't feel any undead within 60 feet of you. I mean, you sense something kind of like on the tip of your tongue, uh, like when you taste the new flavor. It, 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 it's, it sits there, but it's beyond your reach to tell where it is. Or I mean, so it's outside of the 60 feet. As for hollowed or desecrated, you can tell immediately that this this is this is not a shrine anymore. It's a tomb. It is desecrated ground, steeped with darkness and filled with shadow. And as he kind of reaches and he feels this this darkness immediately press back at him, I'll just kind of grunt. Ugh. This place hangs with evil. I can feel it down to my bones. We need to be careful if we want to drive it from this place. What's Yasni doing in this new world that he's discovered down here? Um, Yasni's backpack kind of broke his fall. Uh, it almost looked like he kind of like slid down in this tunnel and landed on his feet, you know, in some way, shape and form. And as, um, and as Aaron's saying this or whatever about this evil and about this, you know, broken stuff, he's just like, he's looking around first. He starts looking at his feet, um, trying to find, you know, is, are, is that rocks? Is that bone? Is that whatever? And then he's slowly just making his way, um, to the, uh, uh, through all the Panthers and stuff that are on the, the panther statues, everything that's on the wall. And I think he kind of gets fixated maybe on the, the little cubby holes on the one side of the wall um, and starts taking small steps in that direction, not even worrying about the rest of his stuff if uh, his backpack's all right or anything like that. Yeah, so you start slipping off to the side, walking over towards these alcoves. Or what? what is everybody else doing? Uh, so Kutari would kind of similar to Aaron check his body to make sure that he was fine, kind of like bend bend his legs to make sure that everything was working okay. He'd try and kind of figure out how much time had passed, and he would stand still and kind of observe everyone else in the room, not wanting to make the first move. Okay, and Monty, uh, similar to Aaron and Kutari, like. Monty has the least elegant way of waking up from a fall. He sort of like, <gasps> and just like starts patting himself, like just like making sure he's all all right, and just like to just look around in the darkness. Um, and like almost instinctively, he would like take his shield and his sword, and they're just like clacking together, just from him shaking. And then he would notice Yasni sort of wandering off. And just like, while while also keeping his like eyes on uh, Katari and Aaron, making sure they don't go off somewhere, he starts like skulking behind Yasni just to make sure he doesn't get into anything he really shouldn't be. Yeah. So as as you meander off after Yasni to the side, uh, Yasni, you would arrive kind of at these alcoves along the wall. There are eight of them. Seven small ones and one larger one. And I'm assuming you approach the large one first as a rest in the center among all of these. <clears throat> it appears to be some sort of a diorama. Um, depicting Each of them seems to depict some aspect of tribal life. Uh, there are little figures kind of carved of clay and painted, each holding different items pertaining to who they are. You see commoners, you see warriors, you see hunters, um, etc., and these, these scenes portray different parts of tribal life. They see fishing, farming, religion, warfare. Uh, one appears to be some sort of like a creation story and, and crafting as well. And as you approach the center one, though, you see that it, it holds uh, 12 warriors. A, a single scout is kind of like pointing in a direction and a mastiff kind of running alongside him. Uh, there's a panther kind of stalking through what appears to be a carved forest. 
and um, a a deer as well. And these these carvings are very very intricate, very well done. Um, are, um, carvings are are they like pieces or are they against the wall? They're like little ceramic dolls. Like you can pick them up. How um like chess piece size or larger? Um, probably you know like the uh, the Russian nesting dolls. Yes. Okay. Probably like a little bit larger than one of those, but they but they look like a. I guess the best thing I can describe them is like size and shape and design is like those old like tro those little those old troll toys with like the hair and the gem belly that's like how big they are and what they kind of look like in shape and size nice um all right then yeah, i'd inspect them really um and i'd pick up probably the closest one the little figure and just um just look to see what it's made out of um especially if it's made out of stone or anything to that effect yeah they seem to be made of like brittle clay like uh like river clay almost um, and what you know with that 23 is that uh, this this tribe uh, that you're kind of seeing here, the, it, it, the carvings in the background as you're looking off, as you're kind of like, because there's carvings along the wall uh, behind each of the dioramas, and you can see in the background Tomoachan, the city. These these appear to have been the like a, like a depiction of the people who lived here and what they did. So th this hunting party, uh, one of them stands out against all the others. He's got a very ornate headdress. And he's carrying in one of his hands uh, a very weird-looking kind of like a shepherd crook, it was what it looks like, and, and a knife in the other. He looks like a chief almost. So, I mean, it, it looks uh, – it, it, these are these are depictions of the inhabitants who used to live here. Does the, uh, the chief look similar to the uh, chief that we met just a little while ago? Or at least their kind of garb? Yeah, in garb, definitely. But that chief didn't have one of these weird-looking crooks. Of course, I'd um, I'd probably turn around to the rest of the group, um, and just uh, like motion them to come and take a look and be like, "Hey, hey, guys, there's the chieftain and all the tribe." Aaron would approach up, kind of looking at them. Yes, it seemed that these are some sort of depiction of the tribe as they as they founded these lands as they built this place i guess it would be before they it fell under the curse that it's now known for it's just average life there's nothing strange about it except that it's here in this place yeah that's some good work look at this look at these details i kind of like show them one of the the dolls that i picked up He's yeah. meant something to somebody. Yeah, as, as you pick it up, like a layer of dust kind of comes off in your hands. These haven't been touched in years. These, these are old. Uh, they have been... You, you, can, you can imagine these things probably haven't seen the light of day in maybe half a century. Probably longer, much longer. Half a century isn't very long, so probably two century. <laughs> um, I want you to roll me a perception check, though, Yasni, as you're leaning in. And looking at these things. Uh, you're muted. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, I was go. also wrong. Uh, 18 total. Uh, you immediately notice that out of all of these dusty figures and things on this shelf, um, this item that the chief is holding, this weird looking crook, has no dust on it. Interesting. Um, Yasni probably does one of those, like, reach for it. Wait a minute. That's not right. Is there anything, is there anything else that looks different about it besides the no dust? Uh, besides the fact that it doesn't look very much like a crook. I mean, it looks kind of like a crook, but not really. Like, it's, like, similar in shape, but there's, like, ex like three extra tines on the bottom, each going in different directions. Hmm. All right, let me see if he's going to do this. Yep. Uh, he picks it up. Nothing happens. <laughs> but You he, pick he, it up just fine. But he, he probably turns around, um, and uh, I'm assuming I guess Aaron's probably standing right next to him since he was just talking and telling him about this stranger. Just be like, this one? 
has been touched recently or something. Look, no dust. You shouldn't just grab things like that. It's dangerous. He says, completely ignoring what you actually said. Yes, it, it's it. Did he freeze for everybody else too? Yeah. The suspense yeah. is killing me. He's like, oh, he's back. Hey, did I just cut out for no reason? Yeah, you can see yourself right there. You did. There's two of you. What? Uh, your, your other you looks as surprised as you are right now. Yeah, no. Hangouts just shit itself for no reason. It's because it knew what was coming next. As you return to the game, you die immediately. No! <laughs> Let's see. How, how do kill clone me? But he would kind of ignore Aaron's uh, uh, thing about don't touch anything. Like this whole world isn't like some pristine glass ball you're supposed to put up on a pedestal and never touch. But as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Please, please at least get one of our attentions before picking things up. Please, please, ask, please ask one of us to look at it. <sighs> Yasu would sigh and head off to look at one of the Panthers. Yeah, it, the, the Panther is just as intricately carved as everything else. I mean, it's just the detail is, is, is astounding. Um, I mean, you've never seen workmanship this fine done with simple clay before. And all by hand, it looks like, too. Nice. Are they all in the same area? Or are are they spread apart? Are there any other statues, like, on different walls or farther off yeah, from yeah. the mural? Yeah, So this is just one alcove. There are seven more besides this one. I'd probably peek in all of them while they're just sitting there, you know, scolding me or doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, as you kind of walk down along each diorama, uh, one of them kind of just depicts uh, a group of commoners um, fishing. And they're using nets, they're carving a dugout, they're gathering rushes. The next one over is just them engaging in farming. There are some tribal warriors standing guard at the field. Um, some sort of a priest with in a bird costume kind of seems to be appear to be doing some sort of a ritual. Um, you go to the next one. Uh, it looks like a scene of tribal warfare, two tribes coming together and fighting. One of them is obviously obviously painted in kind of a green and red, and the other one is kind of painted in like a blue and black. And so the two of them are kind of clashing in the middle of this field. And it just it goes on. I mean, there there's a there's a one that's a creation, it appears, a god kind of leaning over a bowl of ashes and blood and forming a human. Uh, there's another one just past that of people weaving rugs. I mean, just every aspect of their life, it seems, is covered in these diora dioramas. Very nice. As I'm uh, walking on, um, I'm uh, taking the, uh, the undusted uh, one that I have and just nonchalantly putting it in my pack with the rest of my other uh, nooks and... Uh, crannies and all the other stuff. Yeah, as you reach the end of the dioramas, you see that this cave-in that you, that you fell in through seems to have completely blocked off the west wall. You don't know what's behind that cave-in. You don't know what could be back there. Uh, you just know that it's completely blocked off. All that's left, besides what you've already investigated, is the strange domed thing in the center of the room and the featureless stone door at the other end of the room. Uh, so I guess I'm going to go check out that stone thing in the center of the room. It's like a dome or something. 
Yeah, so it's like kind of like a like a large domed object that you could. I mean, for nobody who having searched it yet, as you walk up, you see that it's kind of got this beautiful mosaic tile on it, and what it appears to be is, is some sort of a sun, kind of half rising out of the center of the room. In the very top of it, there's a hole, uh, a dark hole going down into the center, and the mosaic tile kind of spread off of it, kind of like little rays of the sun. How 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 big is this hole in the center? Enough to fit your hand in. Friend Yasni. Did it I, I seem to remember you mentioning you had a ten foot pole in your pack. Um I don't, but I do have a quarter staff. Close enough. It's it's six feet. Are, are you very attached to that quarterstaff? Oh, not at all. Might, might I uh, use that for one moment? Sure, he takes it out of his pack and hands it to you, but uh, follows you closely to see what the heck you're going to do. Yeah, uh, Amonti would uh, sidle up to uh, that this stone edifice, whatever this thing is, and seeing the hole and Katari having like eyed it for a bit. Monty's just gonna he's gonna inspect it first to see if he can see down into the hole first. Yeah, you can see maybe like a foot and a half down, but it keeps going. Monty is as gingerly as possible going to shove the quarter staff in and then like sprint away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, so you take the, the quarter staff and you're just kind of like you're like a like a farmer, like kind of stabbing the hay with his pitchfork. You just, uh, and then you just shove it in and turn and run. And yeah. as it goes in, you hear uh, you, you hear D -d 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 -d, as it bounces down the hole and goes, as it stops, like still three feet of the quarter staff sticking out of the hole. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. Oh, well, I'm out of ideas. Uh, yeah, so Katari removes the, the quarterstaff and hands it back to Yasni as he goes to reach his hand uh, hand in. And he can get his hand inside, but as soon as it kind of gets to about this part of his forearm, he's just too bulky to fit his arm inside. Uh-huh, bulky. <laughs> yeah. Yasni takes uh, as, he, as he turns and says, uh, it looks like someone else will have to check inside here. Yeah, he's like, he's like, <laughs> Yeah, and he takes the staff and mutters to himself that he's like, I'm picking up statues. They're putting their hands in holes. What's, come on. So who, who will, who will brave the hole of the sun next? Uh, Monty kind of like eyes everyone like. Katari's too bulky, too bulky. Aaron is called the Hand of Tear, so he's just like, hmm, hands are important to him. <laughs> and uh, he looks at Yasni, and uh, like he has the the hands of a of a three year old, so he doesn't think they're too dexterous. Um, and they're probably so, also like this big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so Monty just kind of like just internally weeps and just like sidles over to the hole looking down into the darkness and he's he's going to reach his hand in okay are you are you going down as far as you can I look, I look at the other three what do you think No, seems, no one seems foolish to me. But what is it made out of? Is not well heated. Monty takes his hand out. Yes, yes. What? <laughs> what's the stone made of? Uh, it's like mosaic tiles over what appears to be kind of like a, st a rounded stone orb. That's kind of like buried in this, uh, in the in the dirt and in the in the stone right here. 
So the the like it's like a mound kind of carved from the stone to be perfectly like half of a circle, and then there's mosaic tiles kind of like built into it to make it look like the sun. Uh, is it just the sun that the mosaic tile uh, tile uh, depicts? Yeah, that's it. Well, um, I do have a torch if you want to shove the fire end down to see at the bottom. Yes, friend Yasni. Yes, that works. <laughs> All right, so I'll take out one of the torches and then uh, light it and hand it to him. <laughs> All right, uh, Monty will, will grab the torch and uh, it's basically the same thing with... Uh, with the quarter staff, he'll just like, and then just like try and get back as far as possible with the head <laughs> of the torch in the hole. Okay, so you stick the head of the torch in the hole, and uh, as you kind of like stick it down in through the center, I kind of like look, you like peering over the edge. Uh, you see, I mean, the flames make it so you can't see very well, but something glitters at the bottom of the hole. I can't I can't make out what it is, what's glittering. This is some cursed pirates of the Caribbean gold. I I'll look at my hands, look at back at everyone, and back at my hands, and just choose my non sword hand. And I'm I'm go I'm I'm reaching for it. <laughs> Okay, you have to lift yourself almost completely onto the top of the of the rounded dome. And as your hand slides down the side, you feel it scrape against the stone once, twice. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller until your hand is kind of like cupped like this. Oh. And as you reach the bottom and you feel your hand touch something cold and metallic, it appears to be a handle of some sort. I'll, uh, I'll pull the handle. <laughs> yeah. All right, baby. Hey, you pull the handle suddenly from the sides of the wall, sharp spike shooting. No, I'm just kidding. No. Okay. So you, you grab the handle and you pull it upwards and it's heavy. It's like really heavy. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, need yeah. a straight check from you. Ooh. Okay. Athletics. Let's see. Athletics check. Ooh. That's a that's a four. Um, as you kind of pull and strain, it's a bit too heavy for you. Mm. At least you don't have good enough footing or something. Maybe if you readjust it or got some help. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll I'll look back at uh <laughs> the giant Goliath back there and, and uh, say, uh, grab my shoulder. We're pulling this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hope, hope I don't crit. Oh, man, I rolled like shit. Uh, <laughs> el 11. Oh, come on. That doesn't give me advantage or something. Is 11 total? Yes, total. I'm not going to give you advantage. I'll give you a plus three, though. So go ahead and roll. Okay, so that will put me at a plus four, then, for athletics. Fourteen. That's enough. Ah. As as you start to pull, uh, you feel, you hear, and your arm slowly starts to come up, and it's, it's so heavy. Uh, you, as you're pulling, you feel something... Harry and legged brush across your hand though. Do you keep pulling or let go? I th yeah, I feel like Monty would almost in instinctively like sort of like just just freak the fuck out, just freak out, but he gets that sort of like super strength when you freak out. So he just okay. like he just like keeps like ah, just pulls. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, you pull as fast as you can. You get like a sudden burst of strength. Uh, you turn into like, I don't know, something. I don't know. You get strong. And as you pull. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> as you pull, uh, I mean, you, the, the, it starts going faster and faster and faster. And then you feel a pain on your hand as something bites you. Oh, that's mm, okay. <laughs> you take two points of damage. Okay. So it doesn't hurt that bad, but it hurts. Yeah. And as you pull your hand free, uh, you see a little, like a kind of like a, it's actually not very little, like a fist size red and black spider on your hand. Oh, that's not good. And I like instinctively just punch it with my other hand, with my gloved hand. Yeah, you hear a little yelp. And then the one arm you're holding, holding, you're holding on to, uh, Corey, gets pulled away from you as he kind of like comes and punches his own hand. I'm not gonna make you roll. The spider just just splatters across the back of your hand, kind of little black and green uh, bits of goo and viscous stripping off of you. Uh, but the handle isn't heavy anymore, and as it kind of slumps to the side, kind of this hempen rope on the end of a golden handle, you hear a at the far end of the room where the door is. Okay. Um, so I, I sort of like still clasping that golden handle in my hand, by the way. Um, I'm just going to look at the wound on the back of my hand. Does it seem like, does it seem poisonous? Like, I'm going to need you to make me a con save. Okay. Does this count as a save against traps? <laughs> no. Nah. All right. Ooh, uh, 19. Okay, yeah, you succeed. It didn't seem to have been able to bite you anywhere significant, so little kind of like drips of green are kind of like pouring out of this wound on the back of your hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> and sort of as like an afterthought, he's not even looking at the handle. Uh Monty just takes out his hand axe and just slices the handle off the end of that hempen rope and puts it in his pack. Okay, go ahead and add a uh, golden handle to your inventory worth five gold pieces. Eh, better than nothing. I was going to say, as, as you're doing all this, Yasni's standing right next to you with block and tackle and grappling hook in his hand going, I guess you don't need these anymore. Okay. Well, you, you wouldn't have had to reach your hand in there. Oh. Thanks. Appreciate okay. you. Oh, I was getting it out. You just stuck your hand in there too quick. Sorry. And he goes back putting that back in his pouch, his uh, backpack. It sounds like that switch may have opened the door. We should check it out. I'll begin walking towards the door. I agree. Yeah, I'll follow behind Sir Aaron. So the door itself <clears throat> is featureless without a handle. Uh, carved in the face of it is some sort of like a sun symbol. And the, the door appears as if it should open into the room that you're standing in. Uh, there hinges are visible on the side, so you do know that it is a door, but there's no visible lock or handle. Uh, there's kind of a slight gap along the top of it, though, where an archway forms with a keystone in the center. And as you look up and you're looking at it, you see that the keystone, uh, the face of it at least, has kind of fallen away, revealing a hole in the center of it. How high up is that? Because that's something that we could look into, or we, do we need to boost up? It's probably about like 15 feet above you. So if somebody stood on someone's shoulders, then maybe you could look. I wonder who we could stand on. 
Mr. Meantime, Arm I'll Too Big. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, Christian he's, Katari, he's, without saying a word, just kneels down and kind of motions his hands up, waiting for someone to climb up. Monty, you're the tallest of us that's not wearing he kind of gestures to himself all this heavy armor there. Oh, quite true, quite true. Um, so I, I imagine Kut- it. I imagine Kutari is like holding his, you know, he's lacing his hands for Monty to step in like like you do. Um, and uh, Monty just takes a step into his hand and sort of like Oh, up, up, above, up to the top of the door, and just like just peeks over. So the keyhole is very weirdly shaped. Um, it's kind of like it looks normal, except for there's like a weird line to the side. Also, flexing his massive arms. Oh. Get to the keystone. It's not a keystone. I'll be back. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We were memeing too hard. What was the yeah, description so- of the keystone? <laughs> so it, it looks like a very simplistic keyhole. Um, mm-hmm. Like nothing too fancy. But, but what's weird about it is that instead of just being straight up and down, there's also a line to the side. I want you to roll me an investigation check. That's a nine. Yeah, you you can't put your finger on it, but you feel like you've seen a shape like this recently. A keyhole with a line to the side of it? Hmm. Well, all right. Yeah. I, I can't recognize it, so um through it to the other side. Are you explaining this to everybody as you're looking at it? Oh, yeah, of course. Hello? Did that? Oh, sorry. As he's kind of like just describing it and he's kind of trying to run through it in his mind, uh, the non-dusty figurine that you said had like the weird outcropping, does that sound like it could be anything that might resemble that shape? And he'll look over to uh, Yasni. Do you have that that statue, Yasni, the one without the dust? Oh, yeah, right here. Reach into his pouch. Here. You want and he'll, it? like, take it and, like, yeah, he'll just, like, grab it out of your hand. Uh, like, before you even finish asking if he wants it. Catch. Oh, me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll snag that out of the air. What do you throw to me? I'm sorry, we were <laughs> we were joking around in the chat again. You threw you kind of that weird shepherd's crook thing that you guys saw before that like, wasn't dusty. Gotcha. Um, so I'll I'll, I'll take the uh, shepherd's uh, crook and uh, again, is it possible for me to look through the keyhole to the other side, maybe? No, you can't. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll I'll just hold the crook up and like sort of align it with the keyhole as best as I can. And it slips right in. And the moment that the key hits the back and you turn it, you hear a loud <laughs> and the door like inches a little bit kind of swinging open. I I think I did a thing. We should be able to go through now. Good job. (laughs) Make sure to, can you get the key? Yeah, can I I take it back out? No. Uh, Sorry, Yasni. Oh. All right. 
It, it was a sacrifice for the expedition, Yasni. Okay, whatever. We'll find some more. What a chipper young fellow. What a oh, nice I like guy. Him. What, what, a, what, a, what a nice lad. Wow. Yeah, so assuming that, assuming that uh, Monty gets down from Katari, uh, and I will go ahead and start to pull open the door. Guard at the ready. Yeah, and the the door the door slides, kind of wide open. It's really heavy, uh, but it, it it moves easily, um, almost as if these hinges haven't aged a day. And as it opens, you see the beginning of a corridor that suddenly breaks off to the left. Yasni's uh, uh, curious as well, but I know the others will uh, will block him from going first, so he's going to be second going down this hallway as best he can. Yeah, so uh, Katari will step into the corridor first and cautiously lead the way. Um, Monty would actually ask for that quarterstaff back from... Uh, from Yasni, uh, if if you can, is that okay, Yasni? I are you gonna put in a hole again? Not not unless I have to, Yasni. All right, I have I have a I have a hammer. I'm okay, and I'll hand you the quarter staff again. I have many quarter staffs, sir. Um, and like. With Katari and Yasni out in front of him, this really serves no purpose, but Monty, like, sort of learned that this is what you're supposed to do in a dungeon. He's, he's holding the core staff out in front of him and tapping the stones out in front of him, like, doing, like, mind sweeping out in front of him. But again, with Yasni and Katari out front, this really serves no purpose. And he's just, <laughs> he's just sweeping. Because again, okay. this is because Monty read. This is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, the, usually the person in the front is the one who's supposed to do it, but all he read was the part that that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, so, he, he he didn't read the part about being out front. He didn't know about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as you guys kind of walk into this corridor and turn left, uh, you see that the stone walls of this corridor are carved to kind of resemble uh, stacks of bamboo bamboo like logs. The passage slopes down, uh, not very steeply, kind of like at a gradual descent, um, until it reaches a, a stylized double door made of bronze at the very end of the corridor. Uh, whoever's in the front, I want you to make me a perception check. That's probably Yasni. Probably a second, but um, question real quick is, do we have to light a torch? Is it pitch dark in here? Or do we have somebody else? Oh, a... it, is, it is pitch black. You guys would need to light a torch. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. As the door opened, kind of like a, a light fog drifted out. Uh, probably at about your knees, but the fog is kind of like it's like a like a dark gray tinged with green. Wait, wait, whose knees? Yas knees are theirs. Uh, for Yas knees, probably at about your mid stomach. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, Katari was out front, I believe. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm kind of at the front, but I rolled a uh, what is that? What were we rolling? It was perception. It was a uh, eleven. And uh, wow. uh, Monty still has that torch from. Uh, wow. From Yasni. Wow. My passive perception sixteen like though. I should have just passively looked for things. I mean that you're actively searching for traps. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming you're actively searching for traps. So the fact that you're actively searching means you can't use your passive searching, which means that you miss it. As the last of you in the back of the column steps onto the pressure plates, they sink into the ground. The entire slope sinks into the ground about an inch. And then you hear, and the walls on either side open up. And you see swinging towards you stone logs like on uh, Star Wars Episode 6 on Endor. Just whoosh, 
and they just bro like snap your legs out from beneath you. Uh, each of you is going to take seven points of bludgeoning damage as your feet are swiped from beneath you. And then the ground, since it's tilted a little bit more and it's a little bit more steep, uh, the wetness of the ground, all the mildew is going to cause you to slide swiftly to the end of the corridor and slam into the bronze doors with a loud clang. So each of you take seven points of damage and you guys stand at the very end of the corridor now. Monty shakes the quarterstaff angrily and says, "They lie!" and throws the quarterstaff to the ground. Hey, I, oh! <laughs> Take a point of inspiration, John. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, and he's kind of like struggling underneath the weight of everybody that's on top of him. I'm assuming. Yeah, you guys are just one big dog pile at the end of this uh, slope. Somebody's sword is poking me in the back. Yeah, so several of you are becoming a little bit too e uh, well acquainted with each other's backsides, more than you wanted to be on this expedition. Watch the hair. Watch it. I guess Yasni will grab the quarterstaff and, and get up as soon as he's able to and... Uh, um, I guess just look around. Look around at the bronze door, and because I guess they're not going back that way. Yeah, Katar is gonna kind of like brush people off of him, and then uh, stand up, and I guess try and like push the push on the bronze doors or pull whatever he sees that he thinks will work. They yeah, the bronze doors. Yeah, <laughs> they say push, but he pulls. Uh, muscle isn't everything. Uh, as you kind of push on the door, it, it opens easily. Like, it's not locked or anything. They just kind of uh, open. And we see... Impeding death. No, uh, as you, beyond the door... Uh, you see a corridor that stretches into kind of like a like a like a central room with branching off hallways. Um, the room is constructed of kind of large stone blocks, um, and the corners are trussed upwards, so kind of almost like a like a the center is kind of gazebo like with the sides kind of coming up like a dome. Um, the floor and walls are wet and slimy and covered in mud. Um, and if you were to inch forward and look to the east and west, you would see that there are stone doors uh, recessed in those walls and a set of stairs leading down to the north. Uh, the set of the in the center of the chamber is a large kind of polished boulder. And resting against the boulder is a figure wearing heavy armor. Like an actual figure of some kind? Uh huh. Uh, Katari yells out, "Hey, hey!" You hear back, "Hey!" Someone's in here. Someone's in here. Never mind. Never mind. As your echoes bounce back to you. All right. I'm, I'm going to walk forward and investigate the uh, the body. Okay. While, pa while passively observing the room, not actively, as I am focused on the figure ahead of me. Okay. As you walk forward, <laughs> uh, feet squelching in the mud. Um, the figure does not move. It does not shift. Its head does not turn and look at you. But you immediately recognize the armor uh, for this intricate design and the symbol um, scratched onto the front of it, beautifully engraved, uh, as being the armor of Tyr. Uh, Katari would just kind of stop when he realizes that and then turn around and look at Aaron, not really knowing what to say. Just his eyes kind of fixed on him. 
out the the symbol of Tyr that he took from the uh, the Olmec tribesmen when they left. He can just kind of like hold it in his hand as he looks down at this body. He doesn't say anything. He's just kind of instinctively like scanning, like uh, guessing that the, he probably is not wearing a symbol and that it's probably the one that thing. So he is wearing a symbol. Remember that all of those ones that you will have with you uh, are from hands of tears who returned but were cursed with the with the bloodless curse so they had to burn them uh wow. this one still wears a symbol around his neck and what is uh stands out to you is that his skin he still has skin um his body is just gaunt and sunken like it looks like the skin itself is plastered to his skull almost as if there's nothing filling in anything I'm going to. Aaron pulls out his long sword and stabs it into the neck. Okay. As you move to stab the long sword into this thing's neck, its eyes snap open and it moves to the side with uncanny reflexes. But it does not attack you. It's breathing suddenly. You realize that it was breathing before, just so faintly. And weakly, that it, 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 you almost thought that it was like past, like wind moving through the corridor. And his breath, he kind of just looks up at you and whispers, Brother. Re recognizing you as a fellow hand of tear. What's happened to you? He kind of laughs softly. <laughs> the curse, brother. The bloodless one they warned us about. And he looks at you, and you see fear in his eyes. Zotzilaha is real. Yes. That's why I'm here. You must just be stopped. Yes. He must. But I came here with three others. And they all perished at his hand. He kind of looks at the rest of your group. And you wish to stop him with these. <laughs> and he would kind of like look up at you. Leave while you can. We do not always get to pick our companions. We do get to decide how we lacked. I've sworn an oath. I will not leave while evil stands. You know this just as well as I do. How foolish we are. You kind of look down at himself and he'd reach up and he'd rip his symbol off and drop it at the floor before you. Before you leave, end me, please. The curse restrains me from killing myself, but perhaps you can end me. And he would look up at you. I'll help how I can if you have questions. But I don't know what much, how much use I'll be. We fell into these ruins. The cave-in on the upper level. We have not seen what's ahead. Anything you can tell us about the rooms to come? He kind of just looked down at himself. It's been so long. Oh, beyond. Beyond. He'd kind of shake his head and sit there thinking for a moment.
you face many different trials before you, brother. I... He kind of thinks for a second. There are a few things I remember. A room with heads of animals. Dangerous. And kind of look at you. A... A room. Panthers, cats, felines of different sizes, shapes, ethnicities, locations. But where are the ones of stone? And when you see the altar, know that Zotzalaha is there as well. Even if you can't see him, he is there. I don't remember much else. But I have this. And he'd reach down and he'd pull a ring off of his finger and he'd offer it to you. May it protect you. And you see that it's engraved with runes, um, special runes that only those who worship Tyr understand. And you know that he was a, a Justiciar. At least a rank above you. And this ring is a ring of protection. It gets plus one AC to anyone who wears it. So he, he sets it in your hand and then rests back against the boulder again. Aaron will give a um, nod. Thank you, sir. Kind of recognizing the, the, the difference in rank. And he would nod. Is there any last words, either to me or to the world? My name. Brings his sword up. And he'd look at you and he'd say, My name is Valdir Greyworth. Tell my daughter I'm sorry. Oh, and one last thing. If any of you suffer the bite of Zotsulaha, kill them. For he is marked with the curse and can become a vessel. He would just nod to you and lean back against the stone. Do it. It will be done. I swear these words in the name of our Lord Tyr. And then with that, he's going to bring his sword back and just go straight for the skull. Just try to end him quickly and as painlessly as possible. Yeah, um, you don't even need to make an attack. Uh, you naturally crit because he's he's basically paralyzed. He can't move. So your strike hits true, sinking deep into his skull. And for a moment, he twitches, taking this damage that should have killed him immediately. And he looks at you one last time. And his eyes close as he collapses back against the wall. And no blood comes from the wound. I'm going to look over towards, I think it was Monty that had the torch. Yeah. Say, here. I'm sorry, you broke up. Uh, he looks over to you and says, the flame, hand it here if you will. Uh, Monty will gladly hand it over. Aaron will lean down and have nod. his head down, he begins muttering in just this prayer uh, in a language that you probably don't understand. And then after he finishes, he brings the torch down um, and lights this body of flame. And the body goes up like dry tinder, just immediately catching fire. And the entire and the entirety of the body is burned away, leaving just the armor resting on the ground. Even the bones are burned. Be at peace, brother. You are with now. Be just love. Your lap hangs for a moment before sitting back up. 
and hands the torch back to Monty. Um, Monty taking the torch back, um, he, Monty is like clearly physically like perturbed by this. Uh, he, the words of, um, Valdir are going over in his mind that tell his daughter his, he's sorry and his memory goes back to a day beforehand to a message to a loved one that they came across in the jungle on that first day and he looks to Katari and says uh Katari you you wouldn't still happen to have that letter on you would you I do might I uh might I take possession of that if you don't mind Uh, yeah, so Katari would reach into his pocket and pull out this uh, this crumpled, balled-up note and hand it over. Uh, thank you. And Monty almost, like, gingerly, like, unfurls it and, like, flattens it out and folds it up and puts it into his pocket. Okay. You're left with several choices. Continue to the north or go east or west? Can um can Yasni take uh, a few minutes to actually inspect each of those ways, maybe to find out which way he came from, um, or which way is more or less um, used since he has uh, stone cunning? Yeah, so, so I'm um, immediately you would know you came from the south. Um, but yeah, you can go and roll me investigation to inspect the northeast and west. Uh, nat 20. Okay. Uh, so to the east, it appears like it's a it's a, it's a a door that hasn't been used very often. Uh, you can see several carvings kind of along it, making it appear almost as if it's some sort of ritualistic door. Uh, to the north, the stairway leading down, uh, you immediately see that going this way would be difficult. The doors at the bottom of the stair, are there's a, kind of like a wall of mud kind of like caked over it. You'd have to clear it away, and it would take quite some time to do so. Uh, to the east appears to be a little bit more used. Um, you can see that this is the way that the uh, the Hand of Tear actually came from, the Susticiar. Uh, there's kind of old, faded um, stains of brown blood along the stone path here. Yeah, as they would would take a while to inspect some of the the um, the walls and the rock and and. Um turn back to the rest of the party after they're um, after they're done with uh, uh, Valdir and be like he came this way north is blocked and the other way well some type of ritual room not really used do we follow his path or create our own uh, which one of the paths is uh, to the left uh, I think that was the um, the the where he came from the paladin Valdir uh, so to the, the left is west. And then that was uh -huh. the way that yeah, came... the west is where the paladin came from. Uh, again, Monty the would east go... appears to be unused and the north would take quite some time to open up. Yeah. Uh, again, Monty, uh, would, uh, just spout off knowledge. They would just learn from books saying he's like real adventures go to the left. <laughs> and he'd just shut up after that. Just like expectantly just to get like pats on the back or something for being so smart. Can we tell what this um, room that we're in now might have been used for? I mean, it's caked with mud as the fog still there, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so the fog is still here, uh, but it appears to be some sort of kind of like a like a central area that connects a bunch of different parts of the tomb itself, of the shrine. Um, more kind of like a gateway area. Like a, if you were to step into like a building, it would be the like the receptionist area where you can go, or the rotunda, exactly, where you can go to multiple different locations from this place. Okay. Then Yasni would kind of, you know, wait for everybody else and kind of just inspect the room while he's waiting for somebody else to let him know which way to go. So 
So which way are you guys going? Listen, I think um, Yasni would probably look more toward um, to Aaron with that question too, since uh, he just got all that information about uh, from um, Faldir. I don't know if Jeff's here right now, and if he is, he's probably muted and he doesn't know. Hey, I'm, I'm here, and I was not anything. I figured that that was decision being made. Happen. Okay, so I'm assuming that means you guys are going left then, as seems the natural natural decision. Okay, as you guys make your way over to the left and kind of push the doors open. Uh, it reveals a set of another set of stairs going down, uh, which leads to another door. And as you open it, it reveals uh, a, a very wet and damp room. Um, the walls are kind of covered with like a slimy white substance. Uh, there's about an inch and a half of water and mud on the ground, overturned, overturned uh, pedestals and pieces of broken statues, um, coating the floor, <clears throat> partially buried in the mud that covers it. Um, opposite of the entrance to this room is another door. Uh, only one pedestal still remains standing in the room in the northwest corner, and on it sits a small metallic three-sided pyramid. Uh, overhead in the shadow-draping ceiling are inlaid colors that depict a, star a starry night sky and form strange patterns in the areas above the pedestal. Um, Monty would take a quick, quick scan of the room. Does there seem to be any sort of rhyme or reason to the placement of these pedestals? Um, no, not really. It looks almost as if this was some sort of a collection of sorts of fine pieces of art, maybe, or, uh, beautiful craftsmanship, um, statues beautifully carved and made of stone. Um, maybe some sort of a display room is what it looks like. I go to the pedestal and pick up the pyramid. Uh, it comes away easily from the statue itself. Um, and it reveals that the pyramid itself is made of silver. And as you look at it and kind of turn it over in your hand, there seems to be some sort of a deeper significance if you want to make a history check or religion. Fuck. Uh, crit! Mm. So 20. Nice. Uh, you know that this is the... Uh, it's a symbol of the god of moon and lightning. Uh, Apoka Takil. The fallen statues in stucco depict other Olmen gods. It seems to be a collection of symbols of gods in this room. They include things like a uh, a human with a coyote head, um, a crab-headed figure with a with a shell on his back, uh, an alligator-headed god, a feathered warrior, etc. Um, there are just a bunch of different pieces of gods here. And as you look down at this thing and look up, you see over the door, the door that was opposite the door you came through, uh, a large uh, green shifting mass of something above the door. Isn't this the room we're supposed to be wary of? <laughs> I forget what he said about the room with animal heads. He said, beware of the panthers, particularly those made of stone. That was, I think that was another room. Regardless, <laughs> when he says that, I'm looking for any panthers made of stone in the room. I'm I'm I, I'm standing I, right here and seeing if that thing above the door is like an animal or like a creature or whatever. I pull a javelin from my quiver and prepare to throw. All right, yeah, you prepare to throw as you're looking at this shifting green mass on the wall. Um, nothing happens. You guys just stand there. 
warily eyeing the green mass on the wall above the door. And as no one stops me, I throw my javelin at this thing. Shield okay. in front. It pierces it, skewering it into the wall, and nothing happens. The slimy stuff starts to vibrate and shift. And suddenly you see that all the darkness kind of those forming this night sky looking thing with the bits of light poking through starts to move and shift too. Oh god. And bits of it start to drop into the room. I'm going to need deck saves from everybody. Oh shit. Is this a trap? No. How could this happen to me? Oh shit. Is this considered a trap? No, it is not a trap because this is a living thing. You're a living thing. I know. Strange how that works, isn't it? Uh, uh, 15. Okay, DC was 15. So you succeed. Everybody else fails. Uh, all of you are going to take three points of acid damage as bits and pieces of this strange slimy ooze start to drip on you. You hear sizzling and burning as it lands on your skin and your armor and it starts to corrode and corrupt. Well, fuck. I think Yazni's backing up into the hallway and the other place as fast as possible. So you're not going forward, you're going back? Oh, man. I'm assuming we were closer to that other side, so yeah. Well, not Corey. <laughs> yeah, uh, does the does the door ahead of us look like something I could, like, push through? Or like, does it look like, is it just a slab? No, I mean, it looks like a bronze door again. I mean, all the other doors that you tried have been, like, unlocked. So maybe this one's unlocked, too. I don't know. Oh, it could well, be unlocked. That's I don't my know. move is to run to <laughs> run forward and try and open and push open the door, go through. It swings open easily, and you fall through into the next hallway. Um, Monty is actually going to scoop up Yasni in his arms and hold his shield up above him and sprint through the room to the other side. Okay, everybody, you guys are on the other side except for Aaron. Is Aaron was Aaron going through too? I'll follow the group. Yeah, okay. You guys follow each other into the next room, um, and this this stuff just keeps raining down on the seat from the ceiling. It's kind of like piling up now in the room itself. And Monty would actually shut the door behind them. <laughs> I love that look of horror on your face, like... Ugh. I don't so know. They didn't mention this in the dungeon delving novels. Goo is falling from the ceiling. I don't know. Is there a... Is there like crossbars or are there like hooped handles so we can like like kind of lock the door behind us? Um uh, you could like pull it shut and maybe wedge something in the door itself. Like if you somebody had a python for climbing, you could do that. Put a folding chair up against it. Something yeah, like that. A folding chair. It's like, yeah, I wonder where I got this. <laughs> um Yasni pulls out of his uh, backpack of many things, basically, and pulls out a python. Yeah, you can easily wedge that in the door. Just remember, if we have to, and it would wedge it shut. Run. You just hear you hear the steady plopping of green. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop him before, or at least try and stop him before he does it, and say that uh, the piton's not a good idea. That we might need to get back out there. I agree. So okay, <laughs> just gotta put it back. Um, we should find okay. a place to uh, to rest for a little bit in here. I don't know about you guys, but I've been going nonstop since the uh, uh, since the chieftain's place. Whew. 
Yes, I'm, I'm sure we could all use it. We could rest here. It doesn't seem like a safe place. We don't know what lies ahead, though, Aaron. We do know what lies behind. And it wasn't pretty. Door begins to sizzle and smoke. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> All right, so... Kutari reluctantly agrees in his head and uh, sets off down the hallway once again. Okay. Yeah, as you kind of turn down the hallway, uh, you see that the, the floor is covered in mud here too with a steady stream of water kind of going between your legs down along this mud. Um, the floor and the wall itself are kind of smudged and stucco-y, kind of with bits and pieces of it flaking off in a way. There's a silver track of sorts that crisscrosses across the wall and the ceiling following this corridor. And as you walk along it, once you reach the middle point, almost to the next door, you see in an out like a, an alcove to your right, a large statue of a man outfitted in fine clothing and holding a stone tray in his raised arms. Its eyes are black gemstones. And the right one is kind of drooping out of its socket, balanced on the statue's cheek. From behind the left shoulder, there's a hilt of a weapon, most likely a sword. And the stone tray, as well as the forehead and nose, are chipped and scratched. I think Yasni would... Was it made of... What did you say it was made out of? Metal or stone? Sorry. The, the, the statue itself is made of stone, and so is this, the tray... But in its eyes are black gems, and on its back you can see the hilt of a weapon. All right, I think Yasni would probably have slowly approach the statue, kind of like doing one of those like every couple seconds, like looking back at the group to make sure that they're not stopping him kind of thing. And um, I think he would be more interested in the actual statue itself more than the gems or the sword, just trying to find out what it is or what it might be used for. Yeah, so uh, as you kind of like look at this, thing the statue um it lo it's very finely carved it looks like it's almost like a ritualistic it seems to be doing something with this tray in its arms and the weapon on its back kind of gleams in the light of your torch uh it looks very old like everything else that's here and polish my <laughs> Polish man. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, the statue itself, it looks very similar to the kind of the priest that you saw in the one diorama. Is is the tray empty or is there anything in the tray? The tray is empty. Look, uh, looking down at Yasni and then back at the group, Monty's just thinking, my time to shine. And He's taking his belt pouch off of his uh, his belt, uh, and it's filled with 60 gold, and he just smugly just puts it in the tray and waits for the magic to happen. How much would you say that gold weighs? Well, I like to use the, uh, the rule of thumb that 100 gold weighs a pound, so six-tenths of a pound. Okay. The tray doesn't move at all. Although you realize as you're kind of like dropping the gold onto it and kind of like leaning against it, it shifts down slightly. Well, at least we know it's a mechanism. Oh, that's cool. Does it want gold? I mean, I have a bag of rocks. Well, I don't know if the statue can tell if it's gold or not, but... <laughs> All right, I'll hand him a couple of my uh, um, uh, rocks that I use for the magic stone spell. What's that, uh, what's that game, that preschool game, Don't Spill the Beans or whatever? I'm just putting, like, one rock at a time in the tray until it starts just tipping, and then I'm just going to, like... So it takes quite a few rocks before you start to notice a difference. It appears that this mechanism is is 
it deals with weight. And the rocks and the gold you're putting on it don't weigh very much. A number four, baby. I'm gonna be, I'm going for the record, apparently. Um yeah. this is more than I so, did last game. Yeah. So uh so uh what did I miss? What happened? Um the mechanism appears to be handled by weight, and the stuff you're putting on it doesn't weigh very much. I mean, I'm I'm still putting rocks on. Like how many rocks have I put on so far? Uh, every rock that you've been able to find in this corridor, because they're all tiny, but they haven't done anything to it. Well, fine then. Um, damn, I had a bag of a thousand ball bearings on that mule, but it's gone now. Uh, I have that too. They don't. They weigh a pound. They, my rocks weigh more than that. Oh wow. Um, fine then. I'm gonna scrape everything off of there. I'm gonna put my long sword on there. How about that? And that is heavier than everything else you put on it so far, and you see the hands go down a little bit. <laughs> Yasni, how much do you weigh? I knew you were going to say that, and no. <laughs> yeah, at this point, Katari's going to expedite this process to just say, well, let's see what happens when it goes down all the way. And puts his hand on the tray... And pushes it down. Give me a strength check, athletics. Oh, Take damn, my long sword back. Uh, nineteen. Uh, as you kind of like put all your weight down into pushing on this tray, it starts to, and the hands slowly go down and down and down, until they rest at about this thing's waist now. And after applying about a hundred pounds of pressure to this thing. You hear a click, and the statue turns inwards, revealing a secret hallway. Well, now that the statue's turned and there's this hallway behind, we can get a better look at that sword, huh? Yeah, you can. Does Is it part of the statue, or is it like... No, it can be removed. Do you pull it off? Um... Do I smell curse on this sword? I don't know. Can you smell curse? Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's one of my class features. I'm a very... <laughs> he read this in a book I'm... somewhere. He knows exactly what said. <laughs> it, it's a little It's a little musky. Kind of peppery? Yeah, it's a, a little bit of pepper. Um, yeah, no, I'm a variant human. I can smell curse. Um... Uh, I look to, like, the only mad... Well, I don't know. Like, Yasni, you have magic, don't you? Well, a little bit, yeah. You can't identify magic objects, can you? Uh, no. No. Aaron? A. Aaron? <laughs> can you... Can you tell if this sword is magic, or what? <laughs> I would need some time to study it, and that I'm not sure that we have. At a glance, I'm not I'm not sure. Well, now that you mentioned that, what it was the sword look like? Does it seem to be a fine sword? So you know, you know those like those Aztec kind of weapons where it's like the stone in the middle, the obsidian blades, kind of like it's almost like a club, almost. Oh yeah, yeah. So it looks like about. that, except for it's made of steel and gold. Uh, I'll put it to a vote, guys. Do you think I should grab this sword? Well, if, like he was saying, if we had time, I could tell if it's magical, but that's about it. That's not a yes or a no. Um, Yasni looks around at the rest of the room and the passageway down there. What else does he see? <laughs> He's going to try to use that to determine what the heck to do. Uh, for the rest of the passageway? Yeah, so and whatever else is in the room as well. So, is, you know, was there other, another door or are we at like a dead end or... Um... Yeah, no, so the, so the passageway kind of goes on for a distance and then turns to the left. Okay. Uh, it's very cold and damp in here. 
not very tall, maybe like five and a half feet tall. So if anyone taller is going to have to crouch or lean over. Well, it's a big sword and a narrow hallway, so I say take it. That's one yes. Katari, not, Aaron? I'm not your babysitter. Make your own decisions. <laughs> Libertarian, I respect that. Uh, Katari would let you know he's conflicted. He would say that... Uh, it's probably it's dangerous to take the sword, but it might help. So there's both benefit and risk. But he'd want you to make the decision quickly, as he's still like holding down this plate. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I am a gambling man, so I grab this. I grab this sword. And that is where we will take a five minute break. Everybody, go ahead and run to the bathroom, get a drink. We'll be right back. Rip. Rip me.
you all gonna die. I believe you. Oh, there he is. I didn't know if he was back yet. Is Jeff here too? I'm here. Cool. Well, um, let's go ahead and do uh, uh, channel introductions and characters. If you want to say anything about your character, we'll start with Corey. If you want to plug anything, go ahead and plug it. We'll end with Jonathan. Let's go ahead, Corey. Muted. Rip. Uh, yeah, so my name's Corey. I don't have a YouTube channel, but I do have an Instagram, and it's uh, at Corey Biceps if you want to go check out the guns. Um, in this session, I'm playing Kutari Strongarm Gorudondo Katai, who is a Goliath of the Gorudondo Katai tribe, which is where all of my Goliaths are from. And uh, stay tuned for just more Goliaths. It's only going to be Goliaths. Hashtag Master Race. That's, that's all I got. Mm-hmm. Master race. Passing on to Jeff. Yes, I'm Jeff. Um, I have a YouTube channel that I use mostly for running games. Uh, it's called Encounter Balance. Feel free to check that out if you're so inclined. I also have started a podcast with another friend in the AppTab community named Jeremy Lilly. It's called The Dudes of Yore. So if you're interested in a tabletop podcast where we just talk about different things uh, within the hobby. Uh, feel free to check that out as well, either on YouTube or SoundCloud. Um, yeah, I'm playing Aaron Hand of Tear. He is a paladin dedicated to Tear and to justice. And he's here not to loot, but to try to actually kill the evil here. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So far, not well. The future is grave indeed. Passing it on to Sean. So howdy, I'm uh, Sean. I'm playing um, Yasni Rolnor. Um, he is a rock gnome druid. Um, I don't have a channel or anything to plug. I'm just a happy gamer from the AbTab community, probably like most of the people here, or at least heard about it. Um, definitely check out like Jeremy and uh, um, and Jeff's uh, um, podcast. Pretty good. I've listened to a few episodes, so. Other than that, um, that's it. Looking to uh, to maybe add some life and smiles to this otherwise uh, miserable adventuring group that we're with. Wow. Exactly. Just wow. 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 Yeah, session one, baby. Go back and watch it. I All right, passing to. it on to Jonathan. <laughs> I, uh, I love that Yasni forgot to how to pronounce his own last name. Um Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm playing uh, Montague du Montague, Gentleman Adventurer, or Monty for short, as uh, the group has taken to calling me. Um, yeah, Monty's just like this spoiled lordling from Greyhawk that decided he wanted to be an adventurer for a day and bit off more than he can chew. Um, nothing to plug. I'm, I'm basically just like Sean. I'm, uh, I'm just like happy to play games whenever and wherever um trying to break into the rpg writing game but you know it's slow going um yeah i'm looking forward to the rest of this game all right and obviously you're watching this on my channel i'm uh tyler from the channel on a roll um and so don't need to say anything else but without further ado let's go ahead and dive back into it oh quick plug that i want to make Absolute Tabletop just finished their first Kickstarter, uh, releasing a product called Oath of the Frozen King. Awesome product, great for both newbies and veteran DMs alike. There's enough for both people to chew, so I suggest going and checking it out. AbsoluteTabletop.com. Um, I'm they're not like sponsoring me or anything. This is a shameless plug. I think they're awesome, so go check them out. So let's go and get back into this. <clears throat> Your hand closes around the leather wrapped steel hilt. It's cold to the touch. And as you pull it free with a metallic shing, nothing happens. You just got yourself a plus one longsword. Does Monty know this instantly or is this meta? 
Well, so what what you immediately notice about the sword is that despite how old it is, there is not like a single nick or scratch or sign of rust on the blade, even in these incredibly damp environments. Meaning, in your mind, based off what you've read as a gentleman adventurer, this is probably some sort of a magical item. Monty, like, you three just see Monty, like, give a lustful look to this sword and look to his old sword. And he, he sheathes his old sword and, like, just grips this new sword in his sword hand. It feels right. It feels good. Then he lifts it over his head like He-Man and shouts, Huzzah! Disappointed! <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, Corey, um, as you move your hands off the stone tablet, the door shut, you realize you don't have to push down anymore. <laughs> Perfect. So you may either proceed oh. along the hidden corridor or go back the way you came to the other room, the other door that rests just at the end of the corridor. Well, if the path was worth hiding behind the statue, it's probably worth checking out. Is this the way I would see it? I agree. That sounds right. Onward and upward, then. Me first. Uh, I'll uh, I'll charge ahead on this one, fellows. Should we pause here for a moment before proceeding? If this is a great place to rest, I would gladly like to. Yes. I'm also kind of hungry. Yeah, you, you. You guys could push like the statue back into place and then just like sit down for like. A couple of minutes, like for like an hour and rest and get a breather for a short rest. It's up to you guys. Yasni is Yasni is, is expectantly looking at all of them. Stomach kind of growling a little bit. I haven't eaten in a while either. As Kutari sits down and begins meditating. <laughs> Uh, like Monty almost disappointedly like lowers his new sword and is just like fine and sits down and just like starts inspecting the sword like he's he's not used it once but he's just looking for anything that might have happened to it in those two seconds that he's owned it okay yeah, so you guys can take a short rest then. Gain some hit points. I don't know if you guys get spells back for a short rest. Um, but yeah, go ahead and take a short rest. I always forget, on a short rest, can you use any number of hit dice that you want? Or yes, is it just one? Any, any number. Gotcha. Any number of hit dice. <laughs> okay, you guys get your rest in. Sitting quietly. Aaron standing guard as alert as he can be. Monty ooing and awing as he turns the sword over in his hands and looks at his beautiful engravings and forging. I'm assuming you guys are following the rest of the uh, secret entrance, the secret pathway. Is that the way we're going, fellows? Yep. All I'd right. like to see what's that. Yep, that's where I go. Okay. She shield out front of me, sword at the ready. Looking for traps. All righty. So as you guys walk um, down uh, the rest of this corridor, you reach, uh, it looks like a like a stone wall, just a flat stone wall. Uh, but you can easily see that one of the stones is a little bit further out than the rest of them. Um, if you were to reach forward and push it, it would sink into the wall and the rest of it would and move to open. 
How quickly do you open this door? Do you burst in? Do you open it slowly? What are you doing? That's a weird question to ask. It matters. Well, I mean, it's not like we're, you know, Tarantino-ing this, so I wouldn't just, like, kick... Actually... You read it in a book. Kick it down. Actually, yeah. I, I want to, like, just turn back to everyone and be like, now's my chance. And just, like, kick the brick. <laughs> I want to kick the want to kick the brick and kick that kick this secret door open. <laughs> okay, yeah, you uh, you your foot comes up and wham, and the door it, and it slides shut just as like slowly as it would have if you just pushed on it. Yeah, so you're like bam, Woo! and nothing happens. And your foot slowly slides, <laughs> and then it goes as your foot leans into it and opens. Yeah, see, in five thousand years, as the door opens water starts to pour in but only up to like your ankles it's not like it to drown you or anything uh oh, but as it oh, like kind of only up to my ankles yeah but as as the door swings in you hear a loud splash and a shriek of surprise and then more splashing is is it dark up ahead can i see or is there light well you have a ahead? torch lit so yes you can see uh, yeah, who has that, actually? Because I have my, my shield and my sword at the ready. Probably Yasni, then. I'm assuming he's probably right behind you, wanting to see what the hell's up in the next room. Okay, that works. But by the torchlight, can I see into the room ahead? Yeah. So the room itself is lit by a natural, like, soft light that kind of reveals a pool of water and kind of like a, a beach of kind of crumbled rocks and sand. Um, there, it looks almost like a weird, like, like you stepped into like a weird paradise oasis thing as there's kind of these green fronds growing, growing alongside the pool. Um, there's light everywhere. Uh, the pool and the wall glisten. Um, and on the far side of the pool is a door carved with a sun symbol. Um, that shriek, did it sound human or human like animalistic? Humanish. Ish, of course. Um, did it sound male, female? Uh, it sounded female. Ooh, a female, eh? Uh, yeah, but did I happen to see where this shriek came from, from this uh, natural light? Uh, yeah, somewhere over by the beach. By the beach before us. Yeah, so like you're kind of like standing in like ankle water, ankle high water. Um, and it's only get, it's getting lower and lower, but I mean like it's still filling up somehow. So in, in this room, it goes up to your knee about. Um, but the water kind of like fills everything. There's a door directly to your left, which is probably where you would have come from if you hadn't used the secret passage. And a door on the beach with a sun carved symbol on it. And I say, well, I, I suppose we forge ahead, and uh, I'll just start inching forward with everyone behind me into the chamber ahead. Yeah, how is this place lit? If there's already light it in seems, there. It seems to be some sort of natural phosphorescence on the walls. Yeah, I mean, it looks, as you kind of like glance about, uh, you would see... But almost the ceiling is producing its own light, kind of like that room that you came through. It looked like the starry night sky. It's the same thing going on here. So moonlight is kind of like filtering down on everything. I look back at uh, Katari and just give him like a death stare and just say, don't throw anything. Not at the walls anyway. <laughs> I'll do as I please. So you guys start to step into the room? Yeah, I was inching forward with, with my shield in front of me. Okay. As you guys begin to inch forward, you die. No. You hear a... Uh, hello? Uh, hello? 
Hello. And as you kind of step forward a little bit further, uh, you see the green fronds kind of part, and a blonde-haired young woman is sitting on the beach. She's very beautiful. Um, just like everything else Monty has done so far, almost instinctually, you know, he was, he was born and raised in nobility. So he instantly just drops his shield and his sword and kneels before on the sand and just like goes, goes prostrate on the sand. My lady. As quickly is it? as Monty's sword and shield go down, Aaron's are like up and at the ready. <laughs> how is it how is it you came to be in such a dark place? She kind of just like frowns and says, I don't rightly remember. Ah, a, a side effect, no doubt, of your stressful predicament. She kind of, she kind of giggles at that and says, indeed. Well, uh, should should we help her, fellows? What are we to do here? Cassie kind of pokes at him and says, "Stand, stand up." Well, I'm what? I'm just I'm just doing what I'm supposed to. What are you doing? Give me one reason why I should trust you, and another reason why I shouldn't kill you. See now, there's no reason to talk to her in such a manner. She she looks at you, Aaron, and she says, "I mean you no harm. I promise. I'm I'm I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what's what's happened. Roll me an insight check. Yeah, insight check. Um, I don't I don't believe her. I don't care if she's telling the truth or not. <laughs> I'm choosing okay. not to believe her." Okay. Uh, and actually, I got the young 25 on my insight check. Okay. I'm going to cast a spell. Okay, what are you casting? Yeah. Zone, zone of truth. And what does she have to roll? Is it intelligence or wisdom? For some um, reason, I think I it's think charisma. It charisma. Yeah, I think it's a charisma check. Yeah. Is it charisma? I'm looking it up right now. Charisma save, rather. Uh, charisma, charisma saving throw, yes. Okay. Uh, what's your save? She got a 17. Oh, she passed. Okay. Rip. She looks at you and she's like, oh, what are you doing? I mean you no harm. I promise. I don't believe you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking pulling a javelin out. <laughs> Get ready to spear this bitch. Yeah, she like puts her hands like over her face, like no, kind of like backs away from you up against the wall. Mm. What? What is the meaning of all this? What are you doing? This place is steeped in evil. There's no reason to trust anything here. Really now. If she wanted to kill us, she would have already done it. She's probably That's trying not to necessarily lure us in. True. My lady, is there anything, anything at all that you could do that would convince my savage friends here? that you are in fact who you claim to be. And she would look over at the door and she'd say, that can't be open without a key. I don't know where the key is, though. I've been here for some time. I don't, I don't know what it is that nourishes me and keeps me healthy, but she says, I can't get through that door. Uh, did I ever get a response on my initial insight check? Do I need to roll another one? Uh, the insight check. Uh, yeah, you believe her. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Now, now this door, I... it's it's on the beach, right? The, the door's on the beach, yeah, back behind her. 
I'm going to reach out again with a divine sense. <laughs> Searching for fiends, undead, hollowed, or desecrated ground. So is that what what is it what does it let you uh know about? Um, it tells me if there is a fiend, undead, or celestial, and if the ground is hollowed or desecrated. There are no fiends, undeads, or celestials within sixty feet of you. And again, just as the place before, this ground is desecrated still. I seem to remember a, a stone altar of sorts with the sun etched into it that I reached my hand into and pulled a handle. I think that door's unlocked. I'm going to walk oh, straight up to it and try and push it open. Nothing. The door doesn't budge. Well, shit. As, as all this is going on, Yasni's probably wandered off a little bit to like the sides of the room to find out what uh, what else is in here, like what else is on the beach and all that roll, kind of stuff. Roll me a perception check, Yasni. How big is this room, by the way? Like when you say like beach and there's water, like how big are we talking? Maybe like eighty by eighty. Okay. Eh, not great. Uh, thirteen. Yeah, the water shimmers invitingly. Yo, Katari's gonna start grilling this chick. <laughs> She's okay. like, What's your name? She kind of like looks at you and like shies away as you just request so like angrily at her. Dasa, my, my name uh, is Dasa. Where are you from? I, I, do, I don't remember. I don't know. Who are your parents? If I don't remember where I'm from, how would I know my parents? What color are your eyes? She looks at you. They're blue. What color? Oh, did she say that? No, she just looks at you. You see they're blue. How old are you? Uh, she kind of like thinks for a second and shakes her head. Uh, 20, 23, 24. What's that over there as he points past her? She kind of like turns and looks. And as she looks, I throw my javelin. (laughs) (laughs) Give me an attack. Give me an attack. Oh my gosh. Uh, 15 to hit. Okay. Uh, Give me your damage. (laughs) Uh, four damage. Yeah, you you pierce her right in the gut with this javelin, and she kind of just shies away and screams and starts to hold her stomach as she rolls over on her side and shouts and yells. Monty goes ballistic. (laughs) (laughs) He's been he's been this like mannerly gentleman type this entire game this entire adventure he turns into the most cockney bar brawler you have ever seen he is up in your face like just swearing up and down like he's calling you murderer he's calling you all these things and he he goes to her side and tries to help her as best as he can yeah, she's like she's like weeping in pain. Salty tears kind of like pouring down her face onto the sand. And Monty's just like staring. He he doesn't know what to do. He hasn't read about this. He doesn't know what to do. Um, he looks at the paladin. This 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 brute. In a, inside of a suit of tin, this tin man that's been walking along with them and done nothing this entire endeavor, talked to some crypt keeper in this dungeon, that's about it, and uh, says, help her. I think you mean it. There's nothing living down here. Nothing living that shouldn't be killed. Yeah, Monty just keep Monty just ignores 
that remark and just stares daggers into the uh, paladin. There is still a deep evil in this place. I do not trust anyone who's made their home down here. She would like turn slowly and like look up at you, Monty. And she whispers, help me. Give me a wisdom save. Ooh! <laughs> at disadvantage, baby. Wait, is this a trap? No, it's not. Mm. I fucking told you, Katari knew all along. I don't know, just just playing the Monty's character is all. Let's see, you said wisdom save. Yep, wisdom save. Ah. Ooh, a nat twenty and a twelve, so fifteen. You feel something come over you. Something that blinds you. And suddenly your anger boils over. Katari doesn't even take the time to figure out who this girl is and he's throwing spears at her. Aaron is judging everything that he sees as if it's something evil when this girl is so innocent. And Yasne couldn't care less. He's just there for the ride. These people have looked down on you. They've despised you. They've acted against you. And they've hurt an innocent girl. Roll initiative. <laughs> Innocent. <laughs> could, could we get any lower? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, wait, did, did you get a 15 on your initiative? I did. Okay. Monty's first. Followed by Dasa. And then Chuck. And then Yasni. Kari. And finally, Aaron. Go ahead, Monty. Who, uh, who's Chuck? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Mon uh, Monty's, uh, Monty's vision goes red. Like, this is, this is, this goes against, like, everything that he's been taught his entire life. Uh, he would go after, the first person he would go after would be the, uh, the monk, so to speak, that, uh, through the javelin that pierced her and uh he would just like go all out he would just chuck his shield to the side and just hold that long sword two-handed and just go all out now let's see he has two attacks yeah two attacks per round first one's a Seven, so that missed, but the second one is a uh, 23. Does that hit you, yeah, Mr. Corey I, Biceps? Okay. Uh, nine damage. Uh, I'm on stone endurance. Damn. Okay. Alrighty. As I take six. Uh, Dasa, seeing Monty rush you, smiles wickedly and then stands to her feet and nonchalantly pulls the javelin out of her stomach and drops it to the ground. <laughs> she looks over at uh, Aaron and just smiles a big toothy smile and then the facade falls away. Monty, you still see her as this beautiful young woman, blonde hair, uh, tattered clothing, kind of just alone in this dungeon. But now, Aaron, you see her for what she is, as the fey creature that she is. Her teeth become sharp needle points like a deep-sea fish. 
her hair becomes a stream of seaweed and her body becomes lithe and slippery and scaly. She walks towards you calmly and reaches out a hand to touch you. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Sixteen. Sixteen. You succeed. So instead of taking the full brunt of all of this, you will instead of taking... Let me roll. So instead of taking 26 points of damage, you take 13. And you do not get the extra effect either. As her hand, as she touches her lips... Touches the side of your face, and you feel the corruption spread down your skin. And that'll be it for her turn. Chuck. Yasna, you're staring out at the water. It's moving and bubbling normally, invitingly. You see uh, acid damage. Um, you see it suddenly start to churn quickly, rapidly. And zipping out of the water, a massive eel strikes out at you. It'll make... Kevin, I need a con save from you. Um, nice. Uh, total 17. 17. Can you succeed... As its lightning body wraps around your leg, zapping you. You are not stunned. Instead, you will only take... Nine points of damage. As the electricity surges up your spine. And Oof. that'll be it for Chuck. Yasni, your turn. So, I'm in water and have a eel creature how big is this eel compared to me i'm only three foot seven it's like six and a half feet long and maybe like three feet wide great it's gonna swallow me whole basically <laughs> um oh damn what can i do is it attached to me that i can tell Enough where it's like restraining. Um, it's not grappling you. It's not grappling you. Okay. Um... Jay, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, I'm just going to have to whack at it with my quarter staff. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, oh, son of a bitch. Uh, 19? 19 hits. Uh, total of 9 damage. Okay. Yeah, you like slap it over the head and it kind of just like shakes its head and its eyes lock on you. Shoot. Um... Who's near? Who's nearest to me, as I like wandered off to go um, look around? Monty. And I'm not going anywhere near him. So screw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm. I am also currently next to him. Um, yeah, but you're locked in combat though. So. All right. I probably want to get out of the water as best I can. So I would just head away from. Uh, the eel. I'll take the attack of opportunity. It's going to get one just to get the hell out of the water. Onto <laughs> okay, the that may, that's probably a good call. Here's the attack of opportunity. Okay, right. that's like a 22 to hit. So yeah, it hits you. Oh, God, yeah. And it does. Uh, 14 points of damage to you as its teeth sink into your leg. 
Wait, how they're, much damage? They're... <laughs> 16. This thing just, thank God we took the short rest. This thing just removed all the hit dice I got back. <laughs> all right, yeah, and then I guess once I get onto the beach, I'll, uh, I'm just going to sit there. That's all I got. Okay, yeah. All right. All right, can I get to this chick in one move? Uh, if you took the opportunity to attack from Monty. <laughs> all right. So, uh, I'm going to... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to use my key uh, to take the disengage action. So as uh, Monty's blade comes at me, just, gah, just push it out of the way as I run towards this chick. I have to kill her as fast as I can. <laughs> okay, go ahead, baby. Uh, as I just point blank, just, gah, gah, just slam... Hopefully slam a couple javelins into this chick. Alright, the first one is a 11. Misses. Great. Uh, the second one is a crit, though. Misses. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so go ahead and give me damage. Uh, add your modifier and then double it. Alright. So, six. Seven. So add the modifier and double both? Yeah. Like the other? Okay. Uh, so 18 damage as this Ow. javelin just spears through her abdomen right next to the, where the other one was. Uh, and I'm going to have her make a con save for the stunning strike on this. So the DC is 14. She nat 20s. She's good. Perfect. Yeah, her head just slowly turns and looks at you. And that toothy smile just opens up wide. All right. Here we go. Okay. Aaron. Aaron begins walking towards this creature, this now toothy grinned monstrosity that was once this beautiful woman. And his left hand kind of keeping the shield on its strap goes up to his holy symbol. In the name of the Lord of Justice, Tear, I condemn you to death for your treachery. May you face justice and death. As he casts Hunter's Mark on this thing, he moves forward, bringing up his sword. Just two quick... Um, it's going to be a 25 and a 22 to hit, which I'm guessing are both going to hit. Yeah, let's both hit. Yeah, and as the first sword slash is coming down straight forward, just like a vertical blow to this thing's shoulder, there's this flow, this blast of this radiant energy that comes off of his strike um, as I use Divine Smite. Um, so the first attack is going to do 21 total damage. That's 13 slashing and 8 radiant if it matters. Um, okay. The second attack will also hit as he just brings up another side slash cutting straight across this thing uh, for another 14 slashing damage, which is 35 total damage. <laughs> okay. She, like, grunts in, like, serious pain. Um, the one downward cut actually cleaves one of her arms clean off. And instead of the blood you'd imagine to start pouring out of this wound, it's kind of like a black ichor, almost like a, like a tar that just drips and hisses on the sand. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt really bad. Monty, it's your turn. You see the love of your life's arm get chopped off by the paladin. I'm I'm just like in complete shock. Like they never like indicated that they were these sort of types, like the entire boat ride over here. This is just like utterly surprising to him. And as he uh like takes out his longbow and not knocks two arrows and just like takes both like aims both at both of them and takes them in his sights and let's see so uh that's a uh 17 against uh kutari and an 18 against aaron My AC right now is a nice 20, so that will not do it. Uh, 
It's going to hit me, and I'm going to deflect missile. Okay, so I need you to roll D10. your damage. Yeah, roll well, the I damage. Need, I need him to roll. Yeah, to roll damage to see how I do here. I need to roll damage. Yeah, yeah. because then he rolls a d10 and lowers the damage by d10 plus his dex plus his monk level, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, that's a big five. Oh, snaps. So this arrow comes and I just grab it out of the air and say, Thanks, Monty, as I stab it into this chick's back. I don't think I think you can only throw it back at the person who shot it at you. I think you can pick your target. One sec. Yeah, it doesn't signify any per any particular person. It just says you can okay. make an attack with the ammunition. Okay, go ahead. So uh that would be would that no, I'm not seventeen. Seventeen? Okay, that hits. <laughs> Dope. And you would just do that thing's damage, so just 1d8 yeah, plus your damage. It's a, yeah, so it's 1, 2... So 5 damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She survives, baby. <laughs> yeah, she, she stumbles against the, this, this arrow being jabbed into the side of the arc into her back. Come on, wisdom save for Monty. Go ahead, wisdom save it. <laughs> uh, do I have disadvantage this time? Uh, this time, no. Ooh. Nat 20. Okay, well, it didn't even matter. So you, you see the truth about her. Oh, no. Yeah, you were, you, were dream, you were dreaming of, like, taking that girl to home and showing her to your parents and getting married, and now you see that she's, like, this weird... Octopus woman. I mean... Eh, eh, five out of ten. She is attacking my friends. Friends. Mm. Um, We're attacking your friends. Hey. <laughs> as, far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, they were just murdering some random woman. So, yeah. it's all good. Okay. Well, it's her turn. She's going to take the disengage action and dive into the water. And go invisible. Now it is Chak's turn. The lightning eel is going to shoot out of the water um, at the back of Monty, who's standing near the shore, and bite his leg. And that is going to be, there's a 18 and a 17. Do those both hit? Uh, yeah, without my shield, I have an AC of 14, so yes. Okay. So that'll be 28 points of damage. And then the eel just wiggles itself back into the water. And that is it for Chuck. Yasni. I don't know what the hell Yasni would do. He's not going anywhere near that eel. And he gets back onto the beach. And the little octopus creature jumps back in. I think he's just going to stand there. And kind of just like wait. <laughs> and see what the hell's going on. Like what the hell just happened in the last five seconds. Yes, yeah, so I guess I'll hold my action until uh, something tries to attack uh, me or anybody near me. So is your ready to action to attack when something attacks something near you? Correct, yeah. I'm, I'm just assuming okay. I, I'm just standing by my quarterstaff, so I guess whatever's in range of my quarterstaff. Okay, going on to Kutari then. Um, can I tell by looking at the water or have any guess on where she went or is this, nope uh, you can climb in and try and find her oh man I feel like I'd be better off just like throwing javelins into the water 
You only have so many javelins. I know. Is she still bleeding? There's no, like, blood in the water that I can see, like, the direction that she went? You know, okay, you know what? I'll give you a perception check. <laughs> Crit. No freaking way. The, I totally got it. Hold on. Where is it? I don't know if you can see. It might be too dark. This guy I can right see there. it. What a load of BS, though. You see that's that all I can right say. there? <laughs> yeah, that's a load of BS, though. I, whatever. You see, you see trails of blood moving. I chase her down. Like, are you throwing something at her? Or what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw a javelin. Okay. As I run there, is this like with disadvantage? Do so is still at disadvantage, but yeah, we'll let you make an attack though. Okay. 12 and 6, 18. Uh, 18 freaking hits, I swear. <laughs> She's dead. She one hit point left. She's dead, dude. How do you kill her? As just Kutari takes his aim, he sees the blood in the water. I got this. As flashes of glory in his mind come through, no enemy can escape his sight. Thoosh, as the spear flies true, splashing into the water as you hear a screech. Ah! As the, the javelin hits his mark, slaying this skank. Okay, Aaron, it's your turn as the body wow. appears in the water. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Monty was the last person to be attacked by the eel, right? Yeah. I'm going to run up like between like the beach line and Monty, uh, bringing up my shield and sword uh, and ready myself. The moment that this eel comes up uh, to try anything, I'm going to give it a face full of sword. Okay. Monty, your turn then. Uh, so let's see. Can I see? Can I see the eel in the water? Uh, no. Back in like the water, it's kind of dark and murky. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, out of the three of them, who seems to have been hurt? Like, who? Who are the two people that seem to have been hurt the most? You and Yasni. Well, besides me, Yasni. The two have been hurt the most. Oh, Yasni and Aaron, then. I, I, Aaron's just right there beside me, and I just hold up a small vial of something r red and healthy, and be like, uh, uh, still, still friendly." <laughs> and I, I give him a uh, health potion. Two D four plus two. What do you like pour it in his mouth for him? Like, I just like, hold it. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I just hold it out to him, like, just as a peace offering. Just bash it out of his hand. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so that's your turn then, as you hand in over this potion. Um, if I remember correctly, Katari, in your description, you mentioned running down into the water, yes? Oh, yeah, dude. I'm like ankle deep. Okay. Or however deep I am. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. Um, that's one. That, that's one nat twenty, and a twenty-two on its two bite attacks. Uh, just barely gonna hit on both of those. <laughs> you barely gonna hit whatever. <laughs> okay. So for the nat twenty bite attack. You're going to take... Oh, man. That's a good roll. 11, 18, 21. 42 <laughs> points of damage. 42? Yeah. Uh, I am down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the second bite... <laughs> deals... Uh, the second bite. Wait, that was the first bite. Was forty two? Yeah. 
Nat 20, baby. What? <laughs> How much damage does the bite do? The bite itself did 21 doubled because it was a crit. 21? It was and like the 2d10. The, the second one it, should no, auto crit then because he's down. It's 2d6 plus a d8 and then oh plus three goodness. and then doubled. Yeah, the second one is an auto crit. I don't think you can get the 70 damage in one shot to auto kill me though. Oh, the second one's auto. Oh, because you're down. That's right. So the second yeah. one does 24 like then. Auto. Doesn't it just mark a death save against you? Yeah, it's just a death yeah. save. If he was able yeah. to do 70 damage in one shot, it would just kill me. Yeah, so I did 24 on the second bite. So it, it just like one bite, like you see it just like leap forward out of the water. He's like leaning forward still. And you see it just leap out and just clamp down on the side of his neck. And just drag him into the water. You see flailing limbs. And then it comes up again and bites onto his shoulder. And wraps around him and drops down into the water. You're now drowning too. <laughs> All right. Yosti. Oh. Tyler yeah. does this shit to me every game. Oh, f I've got nothing. Well, it's been fun, guys. The only thing I could think of is uh, the rope on the side of my pack is probably the most easily accessible item. Um, so I will probably spend the time crafting something to try to drag him out of the water if I could. Okay. Um, yeah, you you can make like a like a lasso, I guess, to try and like catch his arm or something. Yeah, little cowboy. Oh shit! Yeah, my dexterity sucks. Wow, John Wayne. Wow. Yeah, four. Okay. Yeah, you're like tying this knot, and it just like you're like I got this, guys. You start swinging it over your head, and just like the knot, just like Poof, and just like the top of it. Just... Yeah, that's all I could do in six seconds. Oh man, that's the shittiest knot ever. <laughs> okay, because uh, I, I can't go in that water. I'm I'm like a half a shot from being dead. Okay, all right, Katari, death save. Don't net one, baby. Did you net one? No freaking way. <laughs> Anyone have an inspiration for Macquarie biceps? The, the dice gods give it. Yeah, yeah, yeah from if my I rope. Can, if I can give an inspiration, I'll give him an inspiration. I mean, yeah. I can use mine, I guess, to re-roll it. I do have one. Yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> I don't want to come up with an unplausible way to add a new character into this in the very end. Uh, 11 plus That's con. One success. <laughs> what does this look like as your inspiration kicks in? <laughs> so, uh, Katari in his mind's eye is kind of just seeing the world fade away. And then images of all the proud Goliath tribesmen that he knows turned into legend come into his mind as he finds the will to not die yet quite yet <laughs> okay <laughs> sounds good all right Katari, Katari lives to fight another day Aaron Katari floating there in the water begins to run over uh, down into the shore um, he kneels down, the water like splashing up into him as he does so. And he lifts Katari's head out of the water um, to prevent any more water intake. His shield on his arm will place his, his left hand on Katari's head. <laughs> Say, it's not yet time for you to die. You've slain the monster, live to see the glory. As he does so, this glow of energy <sighs> body. Uh, I'm gonna use my lay on hands and 20 hit points. 
Yeah, uh, you come too, Katari, and blood and bile pour from your mouth as you throw up all over Aaron as he's leaning over you, uh, blessing you with his healing energy. You you give it back to him in kind. You're awake now. You're alive. And, and with the with the rest sorry. of my movement, I'm going to uh, Katari back upwards onto the shore and like stand in front of him, so that if the eel tries to grab anything, it has to grab at me first. All right. Yeah, Katari, you're you're. You you're wrestled from the grasp of death, from the from the bonds of this eel. My hero. <laughs> Monty, your turn. I, I can't see the eel at all right now. Uh it, it, you you could you have you know the general area that it was. I'll let you make a perception check first. Because it just okay. barely basically bit uh Katari. So I mean you could basically assume where it is. That's a that's a ten. Okay. Um, with the ten, um, again, you know the general vicinity. You could take a shot, but it'd be a disadvantage. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take like actually already in action for when it surfaces. I'll already an arrow when it surfaces. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Dasa's dead. Chuck. Chalk is going to attack our Mr. Hand, or, Hand of Tear. And miss terribly both times. Go ahead and make your attack, Monty. Yep. Ooh, that's a uh, 25. Definitely hits. Yeah. Let's see, that's a D8 plus 3. 4. Ouchie. Big 4. Yeah, your arrow kind of takes it in the side of the neck as it's jumping towards uh, Aaron, making its bites miss and clamp down on the pauldron instead of his neck. Um, that means it's Yasni's turn. Nice. Um, now that um, uh, now that he was kind of like floating back toward um, um, the land, I think Yasni will will risk running into the ankle deep water a little bit and, and help drag him out of the water. And, uh, you know, he's probably, he's, I guess he's, he has his own mobility now. So he's kind of just going to like use his own body weight to kind of like pick him up and, um, move him out of harm's way if needed. Yeah. Perfect. You can grab him by the shoulders and pull him up out of the water. That'll work. Uh, Katari, you feel small third grader arms and hands wrapped around your shoulders <laughs> and pull you out of the water. Uh, I stand up feeling refreshed from the the energy of the of tear that was put inside of me, and uh, I pull a spear and is the eel dive back down? Or is it up still? It's like it's like about to move back into the water. It's like moving backwards. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rush at it and just attempt to to stab the spear into it. Um, does a fourteen hit? Fourteen. Let me consult the book of many things. Fourteen does. Hit. Perfect. So, uh, ooh, good damage. Good damage. <laughs> the suspense, though. <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. <laughs> All right. So, I'm gonna attempt a stunning strike on each of these attacks. So, the first one is uh, six plus three. So that's what nine damage, and he has to make a, a fourteen con save. And he succeeds with like a seventeen. And then he needs to make a second one for the other attack. Goodness, you're using all of your key on this thing. Oh, uh, yeah, man. And it gets a 17 on the second one again. Yeah, that's good. Ah! So it takes 17 total damage from the from the spear. And then Ow. I am going to use my last key to take the dodge action 
as a bonus action. Hmm. And that makes it so if it attacks you, it has like disadvantage or something, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I see how we're playing here. Aaron, your turn. <laughs> Aaron will continue to wade into the water, looking at this creature trying to slither away back under the sea. You are not spared from justice, beast. Bringing up his sword to a like, um, that's going to be an 18 and a 25, which uh, presumably both of those. Yeah, like the eel looks at you as you raise your sword and goes, Nani! And that is going to be 13 damage on the first hit and 12 deck five total. Uh, I didn't hear what you just said. Uh, still not hearing what you just said. <laughs> Rest in peace. The curse of Google Hangouts is transferred from me to Tyler. Welcome hey, to Honor left. Roll with your boy, Corey Biceps. I'll be taking over his DM now that Tyler's gone. <laughs> and, uh, sure to check welcome to Bicep Hour. Massive arms. Yeah, we, we lift this eel out of the water and then kill it with our weapons like men. And then we, we lift, lift the door off of its hinges out of this room and into this, like, horrible place where this bat god is and then we're like yo man we're here to kill you and he's like no way dude and so then we uh, are like yes way and we run in there and then we lift him in different directions at the same time and his body's just ripped into pieces the end we lift the bat god above our heads and break him over our knee <laughs> i think you're still muted tyler from something <laughs> Well, was it a good game, everybody? We did it. Well, what's the loot? Come on, what kind of treasure is he hiding? Uh, he's uh, got a hundred thousand copper now? pieces. Can you hear me yeah. Now? Oh, thank goodness. Yes. 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 He has a plus three. Okay, so how do you sword? You tell me. What? What was that? How do you slaughter this thing? Tell me. You kill it. Yeah. As. As you're, as Aaron just kind of continues down into the into the water, uh, this thing goes to make another like lash at him. As it does so, he like ducks down to the side, kind of using his shield to direct it like almost like above him into the side. Just thrusts the sword like straight up under this thing's jaw, and just as he pulls the sword out, just like slows, just like gutting this thing's throat. open yeah and it lets out like several clacking breaths as it is basically gutted like a fish before collapsing to the side and dying combat's now over <sighs> that is why you don't trust things in evil places Monty's just like, like like a scorned child just in the corner. Uh, yeah, Kutari just like walks over to his spot on the beach and drops his quiver in the sand and just lays down. Yeah, Yasni's kind of just like, feels like he's in the middle of this. Um, not really able, since he wasn't able to do much, but he's, uh, he's definitely staring, um, at Monty. This one, not with, not with a happy, happy smile on his face. Uh, like... <laughs> As as a peace offering, Monty is walking over with the two small health potions in uh, in both of his hands, and he's just like, eh, eh, any, any takers? 
It's Yasni, cherry flavored. <laughs> Yasni would hold out his hand for one of them. Place in Yasni's hands. Kutari? <laughs> Uh, Kataru kind of look at you. His eyes were just fixed. And you'd see he's like thinking. And then he would look away and say, That was a pretty sick throw. And suddenly, just like that, the gods of humility strike you down. It always cuts out at the worst possible moments. I don't know, like it's timing it perfectly. He he basically looked away from the potion and said, "That was a pretty sick throw, though, right?" <laughs> <laughs> and then you continue. You be like, "That was really glorious when like my comrade turned against me and tried to kill me, and I just caught the arrow out of nowhere and saved the day." That'll be now, a good story. Don't, now, don't be that way. I was under the I was under the effect of a nasty sorcery. So please don't hold it against me too long. And I just walk away. Uh, can I recover any of my arrows? <laughs> yeah, if you waited out into the water, you could recover a couple. All right. I'm just going to I'll just take two of the three that I fired. Okay. Yeah, Aaron will like wait. The door back with up. the sun car, huh? Oh. But Aaron will like wade back up out of the beach and like take a moment to like take off the the, uh, the plating on the boots and like try to wipe them down, uh, hoping to prevent any water damage from him like standing in the ocean um, as best as he can. Figuring it'll be at least okay for him to. Uh, Get out of here and check it out later. And look over to Katari. You should accept the offer for this man's potion. You need it. And yes, it was a good throw. And so uh, Katari still laying down would kind of like throw a thumbs up uh, and smile towards Aaron. And then he would say, uh, I don't feel like I need it right now. Uh, your help was enough. If you... well, that'll lock up to the Yes, door. may your throwing arm no, ever be too massive. <laughs> uh, children, children. Uh, so the, the door with the stone, with the carving of the sun on it still waits behind you. Uh, yeah, I'll, roll I'll me, go up to it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, Jonathan, also roll me a perception check as you step out into the water. You see an area where it gets much, much deeper. But it isn't dark. I think I, uh, I think I see a passage below, fellows. You swimming down? <laughs> I, I see that. I see that no one else is saying anything. How how in rough shape Yasni and Katari are. Yeah, and Yasni is not. He's not budget. He's just. He's still got that death stare at you. Like, all right, go on. Yeah, Aaron just kind of like lifts up his arms, like motioning towards his armor. <laughs> You just see Kutari there, like, pantomiming his throw, <laughs> and still laying down in the sand. He's, me he's memorizing the action of his arms. 
Yes. That's how it was. <laughs> Dude, like for him, it felt like just the bullseye, at like a, like the clutch, like final match of like a dark competition. For the, just... the briefest of moments, the Goliath's God hand was yours. And yeah. it guided the spear into the target. And you're like, oh, that's good. That's a good line. I should write that down when I tell my story. <laughs> you about that glory. <laughs> so is Monty going alone? Uh, seeing that I would be the only one going and looking at the wound that I received from uh, that eel, I uh, just uh, sit down on the beach. <laughs> Along with Katari and Yasni. <laughs> okay. All right. You guys can take another short rest if you want to. Perfect throw. Okay. Katari is there too in the kingdom. <laughs> it's like that one. Uh, that one. Um, like whenever you go to the movies, they have. There's that one people, the one group that produces movies where it's just like the guy throwing the javelin, and then it's just like throws and like it like lines up with like ten of them. I don't remember what the name of it is, but it's a producer of films. It's just like that, though. Yeah, I mean, while, while we're waiting, I, I will go up to this door and start, like, feeling around, because it, it didn't move at all last time we tried, but um, I'm going to check again and see if this creature being dead has altered it in any way. <sighs> yep, the door opens. It opens inward. You guys ready? Shouldn't linger for too long. I am. <laughs> Kataria stands up and slings his quiver and uh, picks up the few of his javelins laying around. Uh, and he would catch up to you. Yeah, Yasni will follow as well, but he's not looking very good. Yeah, as you step through the door, um, you see a long hallway. It's 20 feet wide, and along its length are piles of rubble and debris. The walls are um, display. The south wall displays a scene of a battle between natives and invaders, while the north wall depicts people questing for a new land and going on like this journey over stormy tossed seas and receiving the guidance of gods, you know, very Greek mural. Um, in the very center of the wall is the painting of a pyramid with a temple atop it and the sun shining over the entirety of the land. On the far eastern end of the hallway, all the way down to the very last wall, a double set of bronze doors stand um, Beneath an archway, carved in the form of twining serpents. Do the serpents have any kind of meaning that we could tell, or just decorative? Uh, they appear largely decorative. Uh, Yasni, I think I'm the last person you want to talk to at the moment, but I, uh, I think I need to borrow your quarterstaff for one last go. He, uh, he hands it to you with force, like half hits you with it. <laughs> he, he accepts it. And uh, just as before, with his sword at the ready, he inches forward down the hall, sweeping from left to right. The quarterstaff out front of him. Roll me a luck die. Eight. Uh, you narrowly... Avoid knocking over what appears to be a very, very nice vase. It looks very old and very, well, just intricately carved. 
with the end of the quarter staff, I would like to pick that up and like bring it closer to inspect. Okay. Yeah, as you pull it closer to your face and you start looking at it, um, all along the edge, like the cir- circling the, the vase, are these symbols of the sun. And in the center of the sun, on each of these, is kind of like an archway, like a keystone archway. Uh, is there anything inside the vase? As you tip it over, um, a couple of rats fall out and scurry away. Ooh. Anything besides them? A single gold coin. Ooh. Take that. Pocket it. Um, and I'm not much... He in collapses the as for... he falls asleep for 5,000 years, by the way, after picking up this coin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. <sighs> Don't trick me like that. So uh, I'm not I'm not much in the market for uh, pottery. So uh, I I take the vase and uh, hand it over to Osney. Eh? I know you're into this. I know you like this. How big is this vase? Uh if rats were in it, it's like one of those old Greco style like corner vases that you'd probably put like a palm tree in. Oh, so it's like my, basically I could fit in it. My head would stick out. Yeah, maybe a little bit shorter than you. I, and and as I turned to offer to him, I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> Are you offering to carry me? It's a little demeaning. I mean, if you want that... No, I, I really don't. You you can keep the base. Hmm. Oh, uh, well, um, I guess I'll put it in my pack. Yeah, I'll put it in my pack. Okay, the top quarter of the base is like, sticking out. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just, it just made a bigger backpack, guys. It's fine. I can put more stuff inside the vase and base inside of that base and i just keep stacking them like that ingenious okay all right so you continue along the hallway yeah i go back to mind sweeping you reach into the hallway where the serpents form the archway uh do i see anything through the archway uh just beyond you see a wall and then corridor stretching left and right. So it's basically a T intersection. Almost, yeah. Do I see any do I see anything else in the room beyond? I mean, it's just it's very dark in there, so you'd have to like light it up with a torch and like step in or something. Okay, before I do that, I'm looking at these serpents like is there any like jet streams that come out of their mouths? Am I going to get gassed if I walk through here? No. It doesn't look like it, at least. All right. I'm going to stick the end of the quarter staff. Okay. Anything happen? You stick it in the, in the serpent's mouth? I, I stick it through the archway. Nothing happens. Okay. It seems safe. So I, I walk on. I walk ahead. Do you go left Sword or right? Ready. Do I see anything down the hallways? Left? No. Right? No, it's just thick shadow. Which way, fellows? Left or right? Has there been any change in the, like, the stonework as we've been progressing after the... Um... After the small secret passageway, both into the, uh, uh, the, um, I can't even talk, into the ocean room and then beyond. Give me, give me a stone cunning. Damn it. Oh, nice. 19, so 24. You know that specifically in this hallway, the murals, um, 
they seem done than elsewhere. Almost like they had more significance. Okay. So do you step that... left or right, though? But does John, the significance John. seem to go in any direction that we could tell right off the bat from the torchlight? Uh, from the torchlight. Uh, so that's the interesting thing, is that as you hold out the torch, the shadows kind of like consume the light. That's not good. I would just continue to look at Monty. Wow. Yeah, our, our Polish mind detector at the moment. Well, Monty would consider his options. He's got left or right. And considering the last time he went left, he got charmed by some fey woman that almost killed him and his entire party. He's going to step right. All right, you take several steps to the right and you come face to face with the wall. The floor beneath you sinks slightly and you hear the loud sound of metal bars clanking. All of you who stood just outside of the archway see metal bars slide across as he's sealed inside of like a gel type thing. Now... And well, that's fitting. I don't and get that, a say in the session. Do <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that the next session is going to begin with something being in this cell with me? Ooh, I like that. I hope. I hope, whatever. <laughs> Dude, I could just throw javelins between the bars. It'll be sick. <laughs> be like whack a mole. I was expecting a dexterity check or something, like a dexterity save to try and jump out of the bars, like as they were sliding <laughs> shut. Oh nope. my gosh, that's hilarious. Um, the, nice. the bars came like that through the archway, right? Yeah, like across the arch. Oh, so, I got like you. I'm, I'm guessing is that like this, these two passageways are probably like just, I'm just guessing, are probably just both fake. So you like walk past the archway, so you're like not even remotely close to it when, the, when it actually triggers. Basically, uh, yes. Oh, God, and like skeleton warriors are just going to come out of the darkness in this room with me, and I'm like, well... Nice knowing you, Monty. <laughs> this is my life now. <laughs> that'll that'll teach you for not having Misty Step. <laughs> dude, I freaking love the spell Misty Step. It's like the best spell ever. Same. That spell's mint, dude. Dude, I, I, I played in a game not too long ago where it was all that uh, Lloyd ran. It was all level 15, they level 18 wizards. And oh, yeah, Misty dude. Step was actually the spell that I took as like my specialty spell that I could cast any number of times without using spell slots. Oh, I was so like, good. I'm taking freaking Misty Step, and I'm just going to poof around all over the place. That's so stupid. It's Wait, such you can a good do level spell. two spells as your signature spell? You get a level like one level... spell and a level two spell. Oh, man. That's, that's so good. One so I took Misty one... Step. That's 100% <laughs> the correct choice. Dude, oh, so I, I'm I'm starting to realize why this dungeon. Spell. I'm starting to realize why this dungeon is supposed to take so long is because your players are paranoid. Oh, if if I mean, you, that's just dungeon crawls, yeah. I know. If you guys weren't so paranoid, though, like we would have gotten through so many more rooms. But I love it. I think it's great. It's like the best thing. That means well, that this player, is probably well, yeah, because because it's like if you describe this like really like non-threatening element in a room with great detail we're gonna be like that's trapped he described it in so much detail it's trapped did you mean do you mean the murals that i just barely mentioned well no I mean, it's just like, like in general like just it's just an general. issue with the way that module descriptions are where it's just like yeah. there's so much detail put in the room that like leads you to believe that those things have significance when most of the times they don't it's just like 
detailed. Yeah, setting. you're like, there's a statue with a plate in its hand, and it goes down a little as you put stuff in it, and it's got a magic sword it's holding. We're like, mm, I don't know about this. It's yeah, got the magic so much detail that it leads to suspicion. <laughs> I, I, so I, you're going to like melt your head with laser It doesn't laser help, beams. too, that like situations like set you up for paranoia where it's like well, half it's the like, time you're justified in your paranoia so you just have to yeah. be paranoid every time because well, like, sure. plus it's in if you're paranoid every time you'll you'll be safe from the one time that you were right and all the other times it's like a moot point i think well, you guys i skipped actually... a bunch of the traps by taking that secret passage Ooh. i also think actually... Actually... you skipped like sorry go ahead hmm. I was going to say, I think what would be a good way to do it almost is to have each player like pre-roll a bunch of checks. So you have like a, like three perception checks from each player and like a few like, like, I don't know, wisdom saves or something. So that way, like, you can just tell them if they see something. Yeah, that might be a good idea, actually, have people pre-roll for each trap. Yeah, but then that almost tells you that there's something coming, you know? Yeah, but when I mean, you just like do it like, when like you'll just like going into the session just be like all right everybody roll me five wisdom saves and like the first or five perception checks and each room that you go into i'll like mark off down the list yeah and so he would just go something. uh cory you don't see anything out of the normal here and i'll be like okay i go forward <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that'd be a little bit like uh And I'll like be like, man, though. was this the 18 that I rolled or the two? We're gonna find out. <laughs> We're gonna find okay, out. So, okay, so on the down low, did I pick up a Pirates of the Caribbean coin? Am I gonna turn into a skeleton in the moonlight? Is that what is that what's going on? No, what you what you picked up was a whoring coin. That's what they used back in those days to pick up women. It's just got a, a big penis on one side, and I just didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, no, the, really the rats were the, making use of it. I'm pulling for what Corey put in the chat. The, the, point, the of point of devouring. I yeah. like slowly eats all the other gold in your gold pouch. <laughs> I mean, I, would, I wouldn't even be mad. That would be amazing. <laughs> that was an item that uh, Tim made up on his uh, on their webs on their YouTube channel. Oh, that was it's like a gold mine or something. Oh, is it? Me, me and Corey yeah. have been talking about that like for like years at this point about how awesome it would be. Yeah, like a yeah. couple years ago, we had a conversation that was like, "What's the most like effed up sadistic items, like magic items, we could put into our campaigns to mess with our players?" And that was like the first one I the think. Coin of yeah. Yeah. You mean, you mean besides cool. that one thing that made your arm turn to stone? <laughs> Except that was, that was real. A bad design. Yeah. That happened to me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, our our, that... our statistic items were purely hypothetical. They were not ever like actual things we were going to put in the game. I'll share some thoughts with you guys after we finish. I'm just going to go ahead and end this. Uh, yeah. Based yeah. off how long this session took in the actual dungeon, I, I bet there will be at least two more sessions. So, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> thanks for playing, guys. Thanks for being paranoid and making it fun. And I uh, uh, hope you find yourselves in your games on a roll.